right, so today I have a little bit of a demonstration for you guys, as well as a demo file you can download. So everybody has been talking in recent months, recent, I guess the last year, because of AI and everything else, everybody's outputting from like Midjourney or Dolly 2 or other things. And of course, you know, we're not seeing full resolution or rather higher resolution files. Many of these AI, you know, these digital AI generative things are exporting, you know, 1024 pixels or something of that nature or whatever it is. It's not super high res and it certainly isn't full bit depth. So everybody has been revisiting the world of upsampling, which people who do printing and other necessary things have been upsampling digital photos for a while. And there's software out there for that. And there's great software out there for that, to be sure. But what about the software you might already have? One that doesn't get enough attention, I think, is the export function in Capture One, which is why we're here. Now, is this a AI super mega upsampler, you know, thousand percent increase with minimal change? No, but I want to let you in on something, if you will. I'm going to go ahead and export this one. I'm going to right click export. And as you can see here, I've already put it on 200 percent fixed, 200 percent, which is about the highest I feel going, you know, feel comfortable, excuse me, going with Capture One. But you're working with the raw data and any type of raw work you may have done on it, color correction or even grading or anything you've done, you can now export 200%. Now, a technician, a Capture One technician told me this some many years ago and he recommended 150% maximum. I've been testing and I think 200 works okay. Now, of course, it's gonna be a lot of variations and every shot's a little bit different and all that, but I wanted to show you that. Now, instead of just re-exporting this for no reason, what I've done is I've gone to Photoshop and I've created this demo file for you guys and you're welcome to download it. And so I'm going to kind of walk you through what it's about, because one of the reasons I want you guys to download it is that it's going to be very difficult to see on a video. And I know it is. So if we zoom in here, this is the as you can see, the one layer that's on. This is the Capture One 200 percent export. OK, there it is. So above that, we have the Photoshop nearest neighbor, which I took a 100 percent export from Capture One, brought it into Photoshop and then ran Photoshop's resizing, right? The image size. So we did nearest neighbor as a benchmark. This is the pixelated one, right? The, the hard edges one. So if we turn that off and on, we can see this is what would happen if you just simply, you know, double the size of the pixels, technically quadruple, but still. Okay, so we went there, boom, boom. And as you can see, well, maybe you can see in the demo file, you'd definitely be able to see. We went from hard squares and pixels here Capture One does a lot better. But what about the other ones? Let's let's compare. Again, it's going to be tough on the video. Here is Photoshop Enlargement. That is this function here. You go to, uh, where is it? Enlargement right here. Smoother Enlargement. Okay. Let's look at that. Turn that on. As you can see, there's a significant amount of blurring that Photoshop tries to do. Okay. Especially over here on this area. You can see it went from texture and maybe a little bit, you know, sensor noise, even though it's an ISO 100 shot and there's a ton of blurring, right? Okay. And what about Photoshop Preserve Details 2.0? Much better, much better. But if you zoom in, I, I feel like it ran almost like a median on it. There it is on, off, on, off. Now that might print fantastic. I don't know. It also might not. My printing days are 15 years removed now. Um, did a lot of pre-press work and graphic design for many years, but I don't know. I don't like this. It looks like a median has been run on it and I lose detail, micro detail that I wanted. I don't really care for preserved details. Um, here's actually by Cubic Smoother. Excuse me. I got them reverse, but as you can see, that one is very similar Has a little bit of contrast, but a little softer. The sharpness isn't quite there. And then Photoshop Automatic, which is the default, definitely adds a ton of contrast. And that might be preferred, like if you're starting with this high res, do a good edit and then shrink it for some reason. That usually will sample down nicely, but it's not bad. I'm not here to tell you which one's better. I want you to download the file and take a look. But I want to remind you, this one here at the bottom, this is from Capture One, 200%. So just to kind of see, as you can see here, we right click and we go, oh, there's different options, but right click, go to export. And then on here on fixed size, you just say 200%. Now you can experiment with output sharpening and things of that nature as well. But, you know, give that a go, whether you're trying to do, you know, AI things or uh, and trying to upsample that, or you just simply want a little bit more oomph uh, in your edits. Is it true resolution? Of course not, but it's a decent amount. And if you look at a shot and go, I had to crop it a lot and I kind of wish that I got some of that resolution back or at least perceived resolution. This is a good method. Now, here's the thing too, just to let you know, regularly, at least on this camera, when I export, I'm sure it'll still be there. I keep it on uh, long edge 
yeah, 6,000 pixels, which is actually a hair smaller than when I shoot this camera in terms of the long edge. But sometimes I will crop. I'll crop down to 5,100 pixels or something or whatever, whatever it may be. And then I export still 6,000 pixels. Because I always crop two to three. That's me. I'm not saying do this. I'm just saying that I force it to 6,000 pixels no matter what, even if I crop smaller and it still upsamples it to the point where I don't notice. No one else notices it. It's just a given. I leave it at 6,000 pixels tall uh, the entire time and I have for years. So for me, and yours might be 8,000 or 10,000 if you want to try that method. That way, even if you crop to like a, you know, from a full length to a three quarter, you basically have minimally distinguishable difference in your resolution, in your, in your pixel integrity. So consider that there's a lot better, more expensive and an external AI upsamplers, but capture one is a pretty decent one. You may want to check that out and experiment with it because it could just give you a little extra, like I said, a little extra fidelity that you are hoping for. Maybe not just because you have a lower resolution camera, but because again, you crop and you want some of that resolution back. Um, also it's, it's, you know, shit in, shit out. So it's only as good as you send it in. If you send in a 600 pixel tall image and then try to make it 6,000, well, you know the deal, but still try capture one. I think you might be impressed at its, uh, upsampling capabilities on export.